Hello, I want to begin by saying thank you to everyone who's here. I think you should give yourselves a cheer because lots of us have been fighting elections that are a bit tired, but you came out this morning for the message, Make Votes Matter, so well done! And I think we also very much have to congratulate our organisers. I do have to particularly mention Owen, who knows that he's my poster boy when I'm talking to young people and saying, politics should be something that you do, not have done to you. He started a petition, a couple of weeks later it had 230,000 signatures on it. That shows what you can do. And I have promised that I'm not, never gonna hold it against Owen about the fact that it was Owen and that petition that gave Nigel Farage the chance to photobomb me. I don't know why he wanted to photobomb me, but politics is a funny place sometimes. But I thought this morning I'd start with a who, what, when, where, why. As an old journalist, that's a nice, comfortable framework for me. I'm gonna start with the when, because it really is important when we think about over there, when was the last really significant constitutional change over there in the House of Commons? It was 1918, women getting the vote. That was the last significant change over the road. Now I think that gives us a when, it's a target. The centenary is the date that we should get electoral reform. Now when I get to the where, um, as we've heard from many other speakers, there are, of course, there was on Thursday, reasonably fair proportional elections in Northern Ireland, in Scotland, in Wales, and indeed here in London. So I say, where should we have fair proportional elections? We should have them everywhere. Now, one of the things you'll hear, people still arguing, those dinosaurs out there arguing for first past the post, who say, oh, but the voters will never cope with it, it's too complicated. Well, I think if the people of Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales and London can cope with it, the rest of England can do it too. Now, when I come to the who, people are often asking me, you know, how are we going to get there? What's the route to get there? And I don't know exactly what the route to get here is, but I know that the way we're going to get there is by campaigning and organising, getting as many people involved in this as possible, putting political pressure like we are today over there. So the answer to the who is everybody. <laughs> Now I get to the what, and when it comes to what, I do sometimes have a little bit of disagreement with some camp campaigners for reform who walk into a room and go, well, what we really should have is AMS or AV Plus or OBS TV. And a lot of the audience kind of just goes, what? So what we need to do is make it really clear and simple. A fair proportional election system makes it really easy for voters. They vote for what they want, and they get it. That's really easy. And finally, I get to the why. Now, I do think in this audience, I don't really need to tell you all of this, but let's do with a couple of simple ones. We have over there a government, a government that doesn't have a stable majority, but has a majority, a government that's making all kinds of decisions in our name. And that government has the support of 24% of eligible voters. That is not any kind of democratic mandate for any of the decisions that it's taking. And just to bring this up to date, I was on the BBC telly yesterday and they came up some national vote share figures with some sort of complicated arithmetic. The arithmetic doesn't really matter, but it came out really simply. In the elections, in a national adjusted level, Tory and Labour got 61% of the vote in the elections on Thursday. That means 39% of people didn't vote for those two largest parties. The two-party system is dead. The first-past-the-post system is dead. Yeah. <laughs> 
So I've done my who, what, when, where, why, but I'm just going to make one final reflection because I think it's really important and it particularly addresses the what and the when. Because everyone will have noticed that even though lots of us are tired, we're going to be out, if not tomorrow or Monday, campaigning for the next vote that we're going to have, the vote on the referendum whether or not we remain in the EU. Now on this platform, I'm not going to make any reference. Probably most people know where I stand and the Green Party stands, or you can go away and look it up. But what I will point out is this is actually a fair election. Everyone's vote has an equal weight in this. This is one person, one vote, a total tally around the country. So it's really important that we use this, tell people to make sure they have their say in this election. So I'd urge everyone to go out there, write a registration drives, get people, make sure they're having their say in the referendum. And more than that, we need to use this referendum as a chance to start a national debate about all of our politics. I was down in Seaford in Sussex in a debate that was got quite heated at times. It was an EU referendum debate. But what was really interesting was both sides were actually agreeing on something that there was a huge amount wrong with Westminster. And we got a rather good debate going, saying what's wrong with Westminster? We need electoral reform, we need true democracy, we need to crack down on the impact of big money in Westminster, the impact of the lobbyists. So, your view on the referendum is this is a huge opportunity for all of us to raise these issues to raise the level of debate to engage people to say that we need to make votes matter Thank you.